Welcome to Thurwood Action at Gulfstream Park. I'm Katie Stazak. It's Sunday. What a tremendous day we had yesterday here on the Florida Derby card. 14 incredible races, eight incredible stakes races, and one win for materiality in the grade one, $1 million Best of Loose Stables Florida Derby. We get right back to the racing action today with 12 races and the Isla Mirada overnight handicap for three-year-old fillies. Let's get right to the track and weather conditions for today's great card. The main track is fast and the turf course is firm. Sunday's opener is an $8,000 claiming event. Four-year-olds and upward will be going seven furlongs on the main track. No scratches or jockey changes to report. We'll pick this race up on the far turn. The gap by a half a length. Megalith is three wide and up to challenge now. Back third is Keener Velos. Warming it up from the back is Be a Bull. Here's Be a Bull. Was six, now third, now second and moving at the leader. And the leader is now Megalith. They run to the top of the stretch. Megalith confronted on the outside by Be a Bull. Rocky Gap is back third toward the outside. Lore of the South comes on with Dream Maestro behind horses. And they're at the top of the stretch. Megalith shaken up for the drive with Be a Bull up to challenge on the outside. Far outside, Lore of the South. Dream Maestro picks a path inside with Rocky Gap. Here's Lure of the South getting on track late to try to track down Megalith and up the inside Dream Maestro. It's Megalith almost home. Here's Lure of the South on the outside. Lure of the South in time. Lure of the South wins it by a neck from Megalith's second close third Dream Maestro or Be a Bull. They covered seven furlongs in 127 and three. Lure of the South closes down the center of the track to get up in the first race. Paco Lopez was the winning jockey for trainer Antonio Sano and owners Guarneri Stables, Inc. That'll bring us right to the second race. This is a maiden special weight. Phillies and mares three-year-olds and upward will be sprinting five furlongs on the turf course. Scratch the seven and the ten. Also, Corey Lannery will be aboard the two. Looks like luck. And they're up. Last in, first out, Cut and Stone gets the first call down toward the rail. Bonnie Breeze moves to challenge, and Lovely is away in the top flight. She's third early. Looks like Lux splits horses for Lannery and now joins the vanguard. Out wide, it's Frolicking Gal. And it's a stretch of another two lengths back toward the inside, trying to improve now Jealous Cat inside of Smoke Signals. And at the back early, the early trailer is Mighty Catherine. They kick to the far turn, and from the high post, the leader is Cut and Stone by a length and three quarters. Racing second on the inside is Bonnie Breeze, joined by Lovely on the outside, and Frolicking Gal is Three wide. Looks like Luck begins to get out pace toward the outside. Jealous Cat is coming on. Far outside, it's six smoke signals, and Mighty Catherine is still last, and Cut and Stone is still first. Off the top of the turn, Cut and Stone shaken up for the drive with Lovely on the outside and Bonnie Breeze toward the inside. Now running on from the backfield is Smoke Signals, and they're in deep stretch now. Cut and Stone roused on the front end and still holding firm. Bonnie Breeze toward her inside, Smoke Signals to the outside. Cut and Stone in front three parts of a length. Bonnie Breeze was second in front of Smoke Signals, third and lovely finish fourth, five eights on turf, 56 and three. Cut in stone tops the favored Bonnie Breeze in the second race. Paco Lopez takes both races in the early double. This win is for trainer Alan Goldberg and owner Richard Santuli. Cut in stone paid $9.40 to win. Gulfstream Park is one of Florida's top entertainment destinations, mixing restaurants, clubs, a casino, and international boutique shops with world-class racing. In a lavish, sun-drenched setting with the feel of a Mediterranean village, Gulfstream is a leading year-round entertainment and tourist destination and the home of luxury residences in 2014. The Stronach family, owners of Gulfstream Park, is committed to the sport of thoroughbred racing and the grace, spirit, and generosity of the horse. Welcome back. Here's the third race, a $12,500 maiden claimer. Phillies and mares three rolls and upward will be going seven furlongs on the main track. And we'll join this race in progress. Up on the outside, Mischievous Charlie alongside Jill's Comprise. And at the back, where's the prenup with little Jenny? Five sixteenths to go after the opening quarter in 24 and one a half mile and 49 seconds flat. Pam Pam confronted on the outside by Jill's Comprise and three wide by Mischievous Charlie. It's a stretch of two lengths to where's the prenup who begins to get underway. Amaluna has called it an afternoon and they're at the top of the stretch. In the pink colors of the Rose family stable, Jill's Comprise and Miguel Vasquez off the top of the turn with a two length lead. Mischievous Charlie is now up into second toward the inside. Pam Pam is now third. Then it's Enigma and where's the prenup? But inside the final furlong, today's the day for Jill's Comprise. Jill's Comprise pulling clear in the late stages to win on the wire by three and a half, almost four. Mischievous Charlie second. The battle's on for third here. Rider standing up on Enigma photos with Pam Pam in 129 flat. 
Jill's Comprise draws off to take the third race. Miguel Vasquez was in the irons for trainer Barry Rose and owners the Rose family staple. Jill's Comprise paid $14.60 to win. The fourth race is a $12,500 claiming event. Phillies and Mares three-year-olds and upward, which have not won two races, will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. We'll pick this race up on the far turn. Three wide, my money rider begins to improve while third. That's another two lengths to Builder Jack, scrubbed on while fourth, a length better than Miss Lenenny, then Mucho Media and Go Sandy Go, and still nothing from Roll It Gal. Five sixteenths to go, my money rider and Oriel Chavez have worked clear now to lead it by a length and a quarter. Hot on the chase in second is Builder Jack getting around Roxy Lucy and Awesome American. Then it's Miss Lenenny and they're at the top of the stretch. Drifting a whit bit wide off the corner, my money rider continues to lead it. From the outside, Builder Jack down on the inside, Roxy Lucy, and he's now resurgent, and Roxy Lucy's up to even terms again. Inside the final furlong, down the outside, Builder Jack trying to chip away at these two leaders. Roxy Lucy is dead game inside, and between them, it's my money rider. Builder Jack on the outside, getting here head in front late. Builder Jack up in time. Builder Jack gets caught wide on the turn, but also gets the win. Luca Panici was the winning jockey for trainer Giuseppe Iadesernia and owners Doble Jack Investment, LLC. Builder Jack paid $3.60 to win. Let's get to the fifth race now, a $12,500 maiden claimer. Three-year-olds and upward will be going seven furlongs on the main track. One jockey change, Jonathan Gonzalez, will be aboard the four, Lonesome J. And we'll join this race in progress. The outside tries to stay with her second. These two have opened up a five-length margin between themselves and the third running I'm Sensational. Then it's Steel City Baby and Zoombox. Diamonds and Gold gets underway with Phil's Comprise. That's all for Lonesome J. Fire Warrior second last and the trailer with Starburst City. And the top two continue to go at it. Mongolian Chrome up, up, up on the outside now at the quarter pole to take the lead again. Cooley Quitaka's back second and will need to do better from there. They're five lengths better than Phil's Comprise third. Then it's Zoombox and Diamonds and Gold and they're at the top of the stretch. Mongolian Chrome shaking up for the drive with a three-length lead. Phil's Comprise on track now, trying to track that leader down with an eighth of a mile to go. Diamonds and Gold is next. That's all for Cooley Quitaka. Here's Phil's Comprise trying to get to Mongolian Chrome. Mongolian Chrome with a two-length lead and holding firm under Paco Lopez. Mongolian Chrome, a two-length winner. Phil's Comprise second, Diamonds and Gold third in front of Cooley Quitaka, who ended up fourth. They covered the course in 129 flat. Mongolian Chrome takes the fifth race, giving jockey Paco Lopez his third victory of the day. Enabish Gambit was the winning trainer for owner's Mongolian stable. Mongolian Chrome returned $8.20 for the win. The sixth race is an allowance with an optional claiming tag of $75,000. Three-year-old fillies will be going seven furlongs on the main track. Scratch the seven, Distinta. And they're up. In the center, the favorite, Wasco, wins the break and goes looking for the lead. Doc John on the outside and down toward the inside. Here's Moment of Delight. Moment of Delight now moves through on the inside to take the lead. Wasco's right back at her. These two a length and a half better than Lavender Chrissy, who's away in third. Doc John on the outside of Joni Gale and Miss Wilby rides the inside. Down the back stretch, separated by three lengths and toward the inside, Moment of Delight takes it to the favorite, Wasco, who's in the two path. Tipped off the fence three wide early is Lavender Chrissy, a length better than Miss Wilby. In between horses, it's Joni Gale, and last of all is Doc John. They run through the opening quarter in 23 and 2, and there's less than half a mile to go. Given more rain by John Velasquez, Hawaska is up on the outside to challenge Moment of Delight for the lead. Back third is Lavender Chrissy, taking it all in at this point, a length and a half in front of Miss Wilby, then Joni Gale and Doc John. Now the pace quickens with 5 sixteenths to go. Hawaska is up for the lead a half a length now. Moment of Delight tries to stay with her second. Lavender Chrissy is asked to do some running by Corey Lannery. She swings into action on the outside and is up the challenge for the lead. They move past the quarter pole and they're at the top of the stretch. Lavender Chrissy issues the challenge to Hawaska, who was softened up by Moment of Delight. Swing wide for the drive is Joni Gale and also coming on Miss Wilby. There's an eighth of a mile to go. Lavender Chrissy strides clear by two and a half. Toward the outside, Miss Wilby's up into second. Hawaska's trying to hold third over Joni Gale, but through deep stretch, it's the West Point Thoroughbreds, Lavender Chrissy, who's on to score by three and a half. Miss Wilby second, Hawaska third in front of Joni Gale, then Moment of Delight and Doc John in 125 and three. Lavender Chrissy kicks clear impressively in the sixth race. She takes it by five lengths. Corey Lannery was aboard for trainer Dale Romans and owners West Point Thoroughbreds. Lavender Chrissy paid $7 to win. And after the race, winning trainer Dale Romans said, patience has been the key with this filly. 
this is a really talented filly. Hey, she physically went through a little lull in life, you know, like she was puberty, I like to call it, for these two-year-old fillies turning three. And you can just tell she wasn't happy around the barn, wasn't, was, wasn't putting her weight on right. So we backed off of her, gave her a little time, and she's paid us back for it today. Looks like she's going to move forward. There's a new day dawning in Florida. Never before has a Breeders' Cup Classic winner retired to stud in the Sunshine State. Until now. Adina Springs presents three-time grade one winner and earner of over $4 million, Fort Larned. New to Adina Springs South. Welcome back. Here's the seventh race. This is a $12,500 claiming event. Four-year-olds and upward, non-winners of three lifetime, will be going seven and a half furlongs on the turf course. Let's pick this race up on the backstretch. Ricochet will rate his own trip while racing second from Glenstall Abbey, a length behind him third. Leighton Fire is next, and Abadoy is three wide through the backstretch run, a length in front of Rackham Earl. Then No Calcetines, and Mutaka is last of the remaining horses as they have less than half a mile to go. They went through the opening half mile in 45 and 4, and Bellamy Storm is 9 to 1, and still in front for Tyler Gaffleone. The margin is six lengths. Ricochet slowly eating into that margin second, and Glenstall Abbey is asked by Jerry Olgeen to go. He's third now with six lengths to raise. Abadoy has covered ground. Leighton fires on the inside, and they've not yet reeled in Bellamy Storm, but his strides are shortening. Bellamy Storm off the top of the turn in front, but not for long. There goes Ricochet. He ricochets right by to take the lead by two. Down the outside in Abadoy with Glenstall Abbey and Leighton Fire inside the final for long. Ricochet now has to do some work toward the outside. Glenstall Abbey takes a run at him. Ricochet, Glenstall Abbey eating up the ground. It's a photo finish. And it's a bob of the nose that's very close on the money between Ricochet and Glenstall Abbey in 129 and 1. Glenstall Abbey just gets by Ricochet to take the seventh race. Jerry Olguin was in the irons for trainer Stuart Simon and owners Brent McLean, Russ McLean, and Stuart C. Simon. And at this time, we would like to congratulate the leading jockey of the 2015 championship meet. That would be Javier Castellano, who wins the title for the fourth year in a row. Congratulations, Javi. That'll bring us to the eighth race. This is an allowance with an optional claiming tag of $25,000. Billy's and Mare's four-year-olds and upward will be going a mile on the turf course. And they're up. It was a level beginning. From the inside, hot and spicy is away alertly and right to the early lead. Silvery Starlet moves to challenge, so too do Scorpion Alley and Bluegrass Genius. Four horses across the track in the run down the stretch the first time. Now Hot and Spicy has taken in hand to race in fourth, two lengths better. Then an inside running, one more strike, and up on the outside and uh, hold the gold as they sort themselves out into that first turn run. Silvery Starlet works over from the 10 post to lead for Alvarado, three parts of a length. Scorpion Alley is there second. It's a length back to Bluegrass Genius in third. It's a stretch of another four lengths to Hot and Spicy in fourth. Then it's the team of one more strike and hold the gold on the outside. Tipping out three wide through the initial stages is a Nachaha, and then in between horses and trying to improve C trial with Rejoiceful and its four lengths to the trailer, Angela's Dream. Down the backstretch after the opening quarter went in 23 seconds flat and the half mile in 47 seconds flat. And the leader continues to be Silvery Starlet on top by two. Now moving into the clear is Hot and Spicy to be a joint second alongside Bluegrass Genius. Shuffled off heels a bit now as Scorpion Alley trying to squeeze through between horses is one more strike. Taking much closer order here. Sea Trial needs room down inside. Covering ground on the outside is Anachaha as they run to the top of the stretch. With the lead, it's still Silvery Starlet, hot and spicy on the outside. And Nacha has the widest of all and coming on well. Sea Trial snuck through inside, will still need room with 3 16ths to go. On the outside, hot and spicy now up for the lead. Silvery Starlet tries to battle back second, but hot and spicy is edging clear. Silvery Starlet holding second at the moment, and it will be hot and spicy to beat Silvery Starlet by a length and a quarter. Scorpion Alley third, close fourth between one more strike and Sea Trial in 134 and three. Hot and Spicy prevails in the eighth race, giving Luis Contreras the win. H. James Bond was the winning trainer for owner William Clifton Jr. Hot and Spicy paid $16.80. The ninth race is a $16,000 claimer. Four-year-olds and upward will be going a mile and a sixteenth on the turf course. Scratch the three, the nine, and the ten. And they're up. 
From the outside, Concert Stage wins the break, and down toward the inside, Phineas moves to challenge. From the high draw, El Chivo Viejo is trying to cross over. These three are quickest with Overton Square away in the top flight. They run into the clubhouse turn, and from the outside, El Chivo Viejo now works clear to lead Phineas by a length and a quarter. Racing up on the outside and now taking the third position is Overton Square. Out wide on the course is Hyman Roth with Concert Stage alongside. Down toward the inside, that's Open Outcry. It's another length and a half to the team at the back Kitten and May and Lawyer Jim. They bend into the backstretch after the opening quarter went in 24 and 2. El Chivo Viejo leads it by two. Phineas is there, second, Overton Square, third. Toward the outside and now fourth is Hyman Roth with concert stage to his inside. That's a length back, riding the inside position is open outcry. Another two lengths back to the team at the back, Lawyer Jim. And in the two path, last of all, is Kitten and May after a 48 and 3 half mile. They kick it to the far turn and at 9 to 2, El Chivo Viejo continues to be the boss. Leads it a length and a quarter. Phineas is now out after him. Second, Overton Square third. Concert stage and Hyman Roth are next. Open outcry tries to warm it up from the back. Up on the outside, Kitten and May will circle horses and in between horses, Lawyer Jim will need room for Lopez. And now the pace quickens. They're by three quarters and one twelve and two. And up on the outside, Phineas just took the lead and he's 23 to one. Concert stage is next and down the outside, Kitten and May. Lawyer Jim working off the fence trying to find clear passage. He'll duck back to the inside and Phineas is still in front. Lawyer Jim shifting ground on the outside and Concert Stage is coming on. Concert Stage trying to nail Phineas. Phineas reaching. Phineas digging. Phineas hanging on. Concert Stage second. It's close for third between Kitten and May and Lawyer Jim in 142 and one. Phineas just holds on for a close win over Concert Stage in the ninth race, giving jockey Luis Contreras back-to-back -back wins on the card. Tino Attard was the winning trainer for owners Hidden Springs Inc. and Frank Carrillo. Phineas paid $49.40 to win. The 10th race is today's feature. That is the $75,000 Sanibel Island Overnight Handicap. Three-year-old fillies will be going a mile on the turf course. Scratch the seven, red sachet. They're at the post. Racing in the Sanibel Island Stakes to a level beginning. From the outside, Celestine on the stretch out is away alertly and right to the early lead. Here's Isabella Sings keyed up a bit here on the inside and racing second early, tugging on with Velasquez trying to do more early from Miss Margaret who races in third. Back fourth early is all in fun and the team at the back, Angel Falls and Flying Tippet. They head into the first turn, chasing the speed of Celestine, who leads it by a length and a quarter. Isabella Sings tipped into the two paths, still a bit keen for Velasquez, racing in second now, with Miss Margaret in third. All in fun with the ground-saving trip in fourth, a length better than Flying Tippet, and quickly outpaced the trailer as Angel Falls spots the leaders about 15 lengths in the run-up to backstretch. Up on the outside, Isabella Sings now finally gets her way and tugs her way to the front, three parts of a length. Racing in second and down to the inside is Celestine, with Miss Margaret still third. All in fun, tipping to the outside for Castellano, a length better than Flying Tippet, and still nothing from Angel Falls. Less than half a mile to go as they take it now to the far turn. Toward the inside, Celestine toward the center. That's Isabella Sings and three wide Miss Margaret. Drafting behind the speed are both All in Fun and Flying Tippet and far back to Angel Falls. The top five separated by a length and a quarter and four wide All in Fun starts to go on the offensive. Meanwhile, Isabella Sings is trying to kick on and Celestine cuts the corner. Celestine cuts the corner and opens up for Rajiv Mirage on top by two. Miss Margaret is second. Isabella Sings is back third. All in Fun set down driving with three lengths to raise and only an eighth of a mile to raise it and Celestine is powerful up top. Celestine and Rajiv Mirage level off nicely. Handles the stretch out no problem and wins by three. Second was Isabella Sings in front of Miss Margaret third then all in fun and flying tippet in the Sanibel Island Stakes. Celestine sprints away to a three and a quarter length victory in the Sanibel Island winning her stakes debut. Rajiv Mirage was the winning jockey for trainer Bill Kaplan and owners Phaedrus Flights LLC. Celestine paid $18.80 to win. And after the race, winning trainer Bill Kaplan was impressed with the way his filly handled her first stakes assignment. Always a, a fast filly when we got her. And uh, on the dirt, she didn't show that much, but I still think she can handle dirt as well as the turf. But uh, she had a monster work that was published uh, coming into this race, and uh, she's really moving forward, and it really can be anything now going along. She handled the two turns beautifully. She rated well. She let the favorite come up beside her and get a half length in front of her. Rajiv just played with it and just went on with it.
Welcome back. Let's get to the final two races of the weekend. The 11th is an allowance with an optional claiming tag of $100,000. Four-year-olds and upward will be going a mile and a 16th on the turf course. Scratch the seven, iron power. And they're up. A level beginning. From the outside, Bonsai Charge wins the break and goes looking for the lead from Depeche Chat, who comes away racing in second. Galados is in between horses, a joint third with Middleburg on the outside. Then it's two lengths to Amen Kitten. Tricky Hat is on his outside, and St. Albans Boy is last of all as they bend into the first turn. Controlling the pace up front, it's Bonsai Charge by a length and a quarter. In the two-path, Middleburg is now second. to Pest Chat is on the inside third. Galvados has reigned back to run in fourth in the early stages, taking hold about three lengths behind. It's another two and a half lengths back to Amen Kitten. He's in the two-path. Inside him is St. Albans Boy, and trailing the field is Tricky Hat. They went through the opening quarter in a controlled 25 seconds flat, and at 15 to 1, it's Bonsai Charge and Luis Contreras on top by a length and a quarter. Metalberg is in second, and it's on the inside to Pest Chat third. Calvados is now in the three path from fourth. St. Albans Boy continues to make ground inside fifth, forcing Amen Kitten a little wide out in about the four path there now, and two lengths to the trailer, Tricky Hat. They went through a half mile in 49 and 1, and they take it to the far turn, and Bonsai Charge, well rationed up front, leads it a half a length. In the two-path, Middleburg is asked to quicken second. There goes Amen Kitten, four wide on the outside. Bonsai Chat stays on the inside. Calvados is between horses. Outpaced to St. Albans Boy, and Tricky Hat winds it up from the back after three quarters and 112 and 3. They're at the top of the stretch. Middleburg set down for the drive by John Velasquez. We'll have to deal with Amen Kitten on the outside. Middleburg is in front. Amen Kitten is second. Down the outside, Tricky Hat is coming on late. Middleburg finding plenty up top, and he'll win it. It's Middleburg and John Velasquez winning by a length and a quarter. Tricky Hat was up for second in front of Bayman Kitten third, and Calvados finished fourth in 141 and four. Middleburg rides the rail to victory in the 11th race with John Velasquez aboard. Christophe Clement was the winning trainer for owners Mr. and Mrs. Bertram R. Firestone. Middleburg returned $7.60 for the win. The final race of the weekend is a $20,000 mating claimer. Phillies and Mares four-year-olds and upward will be going seven and a half furlongs on the turf course. Scratch the two, also one jockey change, Pedro Monterey Jr. will be aboard the 11. And runners away. From the far outside, Gold Piece is away the best and goes looking for the early lead toward the rail. Successful Diva moves to challenge, and in between horses, Forever Lily heads off the field, and Forever Lily takes the lead. Successful Diva is now racing in second from Gold Piece, who's taken in hand to get a good tracking spot third, a length in front of Roughway, who is now fourth. Then to the outside and moving in fifth is Undercover Kitten. It's another length back toward the inside to... Famous Sting up on the outside, Angel of Love, and alongside that is Jazz Band Joe. And that's another length back to the team of for our Dees Causeway, Scarlet Cole and Sexual Appeal. And the trailer early is Stella Bluish, but she's only about seven off the speed. Down the back stretch they go, and up on the outside, here's Gold Piece to take it to the leader Forever Lily, test the half mile pole. Length and a half back to the inside, successful diva, then it's Jazz Band Joe, who's lost a couple spots now. Three wide undercover kitten and rough way between horses. Then it's a length back trying to Come on from the backfield is Angel of Love with Famous Sting down toward the inside. Famous Sting picking a path, working off the fence to do it. And three lengths in front of Jazz Banjo who tries to kickstart a rally and they run to the top of the stretch. Toward the inside, Gold Piece has the lead. Up on the outside, it's Roughway second. Back third is Forever Lily and moving up now, successful Diva with three sixteenths to go. Gold Piece set down with the two length lead. Roughway is second, late run from Famous Sting up on the outside. Coming on for a minor award is Angel of Love, but through deep stretch, it will be Gold Piece here. Gold Piece wins it by a length and a quarter. Second rough way in front of Famous Sting, third, then Angel of Love, and successful Diva to complete the high five in 130 and four. Gold Piece is last to load, but the first to the wire in the 12th race. Jonathan Gonzalez gets the win for trainer Michael Petro and owner Frank Calabrese. Gold Piece paid $5.40 to win. Let's get to the rest of those payoffs. The pick four, 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 two thousand five hundred two dollars and fifteen cents. The pick five, four, five, one hundred thirteen dollars and fifty cents. Five of five paid eleven thousand two hundred fifty-two dollars and sixty cents. And the rainbow six, six of six, thirty-one thousand three hundred ninety-seven dollars and sixty cents. There were two singles in the final leg of the rainbow six, but no one had the single winning ticket. That means there will be a carryover heading into Wednesday. That stands at three hundred fifty-six thousand five hundred forty-four dollars and thirty-two cents.
That's going to do it for Sunday. We are on a two day break before we return to racing next week on Wednesday. It'll be April Fool's Day, but this is no joke. We will have more stakes action on Wednesday. The Cutler Bay Stakes will feature three year old turf runners and they'll be going a mile on the grass. Force the Pass is a colt that I like very much in this race. He finished second in his career debut to a colt named Saham, who I think has a lot of class. He then came right back to break his maiden in his second start by a length here on March 7th, and he did it pretty impressively. He was under a hand ride down the stretch, and the horse he beat, Weekend Express, came back to break his maiden here yesterday on the Florida Derby undercard. Call Me Crazy is also entered in this race. He finished fourth, only beaten three quarters of a length in the very deep grade three Palm Beach Stakes in his last start. And another colt to watch is Escondido. He's won three of his last four starts, most recently gutting out a very game head victory in allowance here on March 12th over Seventh Fleet Humor, who himself came back to win an allowance here on Friday by four lengths. It'll be great to start off a fresh week of racing with this race. See you here on Wednesday. Thanks for watching Thoroughbred Action at Gulfstream Park. I'm Katie Stazak.